Welcome to Wellness Radio with Dr. Jeanette Gallagher as your host. Her show discusses topics of health, wellness, and spirituality and is about discovering your place in this great universe from your cells to the cosmos. Along with her guest in casual conversation, she strives to ask the difficult questions that may be holding you back from a vibrant life and shares new ideas that may inspire you to make a change in your life that you only can see in your dreams. And now, here is Dr. Jeanette Gallagher. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Wellness Radio. This is Dr. Jeanette Gallagher, and it's a pleasure to have you with us here this evening. Tonight, we are going to take a very quiet journey, a journey through a character that is a cat. Isn't it wonderful? We're going to have talking about today a young adult novel, which is just something that we say we need to have a break. Too much teaching, too much pounding over the head, too much going on in the world, too much chaos, too much judgment. I just want to read a book, just feel enlightened and inspired, hopefully have it connect to my heart and my soul, and take me on a journey. This book today absolutely will do it. It's called Bear and the Fussington Locks. It's by Elena Boyat, and it is absolutely wonderful because it's not a very short read, which I absolutely love for this age group. And definitely, you can read this to your grandchildren. Grandchildren can read it to elders, and I really think it's for everyone. And we are using it as a summer 2023 read. And I think it's really great to be able to sit down and say, I just want to be able to let my brain have a rest. I just want to be able to touch my heart and soul. I just want to feel okay and read some words on a page. This is definitely the token for a summer read. Elena, thank you so much for joining us today. It's a pleasure to have you with us. Hi, Dr. Jeanette. Thank you so much for having me on. It's such a pleasure. I'm so glad to have you on, Elena, because I think this, just as I shared, this is a wonderful book just to be able to be in the moment, right? Yes. Yeah. You know what I really loved about your book, Elena, is that um, it definitely is thick, which I love about books because sometimes they're too short, sometimes they're way too long. I've got a book on my desk that's at least 3,000 pages. I don't know how I'm going to read that. But, you know, others, (laughs) when we say it's a young adult or a summer read, we think, oh, you know, I could get through it in maybe hour, half an hour. Yours, it takes a little longer, but I love it that you're able to just sit down and tell a story. Don't you think that was the purpose of your book? Well, um, it was never supposed to be a book. It was just supposed to be a story. It was actually started just to be a short story. Um, I wrote it about a... I started writing it about a decade ago. Um, Mm -hmm. I was in trauma recovery, and I I was writing I was writing my story my um, um, testimonial just to be able to get over some stuff uh, that was just dogging me, was tormenting me, and so um, I, I I was writing and one day my husband said to me he said hey listen Elena just write something fun just put that yes. aside write something fun he was sick of me just sitting in, my, in front of my computer and crying. Mm-hmm. So um, uh, I just I, I said, listen, I, I don't I don't know how to write anything fun. I I don't know how to do that. And I um, argued with him for a little bit, and then he said, you you can just take a deep breath and write a story about anything fun. And so I did. I took a deep yeah. breath and I started typing. Once upon a time, in a town named Fessington, Missouri, there lived a black cat unlike any other, and Bear was born. Bear awesome. was born. I just wrote the story, and then every day I just kept writing some more. I just kept writing more, um, building on the story, and before I knew it, I had half a book, and Jane said, my husband says, uh, he said, honey, you looks like you're writing a book, and I said, no, I don't know how to write a book. Yeah. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, it... Um, Bear, bear, bear was born, and the story just kept going, and God just kept giving me the words 
to say, and it was, um, it was a wonderful experience writing it. Don't you think that perhaps sometimes sitting down or writing about our life, our grievances, our regrets, our disappointments, our hurts, our pains, it's sort of like, my gosh, how many times do we have to keep digging into this swamp, you know? It's sort of like we have to understand to let it go sometimes and be able to mm-hmm. feel that we are alive and that we can have joy and we can have happiness. We can have an adventure. And perhaps that is what your husband was trying to share with you? Yes. Oh, absolutely. And 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 he succeeded because it got my mind off um, trauma. It got my mind off sadness and onto something yeah. really fun. And it showed me that um, I had... I still had life in me. I still had joy. I still yes. had fun. It was it was fun writing there, and yeah. um, there were times when um, when it was a real struggle because I was really overcoming something. Um, uh, was on medication that uh, was it was terrible. It was a migraine medication, and it caused mm-hmm. me to lose my ability to spell. I couldn't spell, and so I, I said, "God, mm-hmm. how am I going to write a book when I can't spell?" And um, and he helped me through it. He and yeah. uh, the the spell checker, <laughs> he helped right. me through, and it it's amazing. Um, it's amazing what God can do. When we met him. Absolutely. Um, You know, I think sometimes, too, uh, stepping into the phase of another, stepping into a character in a book, stepping into a place, a position in a different lifetime, a different adventure, even a different species, as bear as a cat in the book, it's about being able to say, can I step out of my whatever I've created at this moment and I'd like to become something else. And definitely your character, um, Bear, the cat, is about experiencing something from so many different aspects of life's adventures. So you really took Bear from very much the beginning and said, I'm going to give you a different life. You're going to have a different life of adventures and this is how I'm going to create it. Yes? Oh, yes. And Bear has all his different identities. He's he's right. made so many things to so many people. It was so much fun. Um, it was so much fun having him misidentified as a bear, uh, right? And getting his name and Samson and oh, it was just so much fun. Just letting my mind just just run off and have some fun. It felt like when I was writing Bear, it felt like I was a little girl running. Um, running in a beautiful field of wildflowers and mm-hmm. you know, with swings and just just running, I just let loose and just said, you know, this is I'm going to have a good time with this, and Great. there's going to be uh, he's going to have an adventure, and um, it was um, yeah. I look at this book, I, I hold I hold my book, and I say, wow, do I even remember the story in the show? Right. I just I just let it run. I just let it and then I then I tell myself, Of course I do. Of course I do, you know? Yeah. It's always uh I just had so much fun with bears uh, with bear being rockety and um and then ultimately um you know, and rascal and then the right. thing in the hot air balloon. <laughs> that was so much fun to write. When Don't Teresa and Alex and Ella come together and think- they name him Bear. Don't you think, Elena, that it truly is about being able to shed all your pain and sorrow that you're carrying, and that's why you said about, you know, running in the field, because you wanted to feel free of what was going on in your life or what you were having happening or what you were carrying. Oh, absolutely. And, yeah, don't you think it's um, like, it's almost so therapeutic, it actually heals your heart and your soul when you finish with the book, right? It it does. It, it is. It's a wonderful, it's a wonderful experience to... Um, to see this um, this um, story, just this story born. This um, it 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 made me into an author, which is I, I still love. I, I love that. I never thought I could. I really, I never thought I could. I never thought I could. No teacher ever thought I could either. You know. So yes. um, 
it was it was freeing to let go of of everything everybody said I couldn't do and just and just yes. and just and just do it and just just write it out and um it was meant to encourage and uplift when i when I realized I was writing a book um then I said, God, okay, this take this and let it and let it encourage, let it uplift, let it bring joy. And that's what I said. And uh yeah. and I and I hope that's what I've uh that what that's what I've accomplished with bear. Don't you think also to the cat bear in your book, the character, you've given him some very unique qualities and we won't share the stories, but um when you've given him these unique qualities, you really said you're not going to be the same as others and fit in. You're going to be very unique. You're going to have all of these great things about you that make you who you are. In essence, don't you think that's pretty much what you may have felt in your own life too, is that you had some qualities that may or may not be fit into other people and you really wanted those to not be, as people would say, a hindrance or a roadblock, or a limitation. You just wanted to shine who you were with all of your whatever you have, don't you think? Um, for me, um, I, I, I put more, poured more of myself into Ella uh, uh-huh. than I did Bear. Um, Bear was a, Bear's, Bear is a real cat. We have a cat named Bear. There is real. So <laughs> this could be based on a true story. Um, so Bear um, was very, very jumpy when we got him. He was tiny and he was jumpy, and um, and I, I, he he did he he re- looked like no other cat I'd ever met. Bear was Bear was unique from the get go, but the um, his his extra characteristics. Yeah, I mean, I, I never felt like I fit in anywhere. I didn't fit in, right. in at home. I didn't fit in in boarding school. I didn't fit in anywhere. So yeah. it was, um, so I guess I did let my mind run and just say, okay, yeah, he has these, he has these characteristics that are, mm-hmm. um, that are so unique. But, you know, we all, we all have those unique characteristics. We all have these superpowers within us. Um, we just get so we just get so bogged down with what people say about us, with, with what, right. um, you know, with what the world throws at us, that we 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 stop we we stop it out. We put out the flame. We put out the fire yeah. in us. So, yeah, I, I so in that way I did. <laughs> well, I think also to the idea is that you want to hide them. You know, you think about bear and you say, how can you hide those qualities that you have? And the answer was is that Bear always tried to hide himself. Do you know what I mean? Or when he was finished with an adventure, he went on to a different adventure. And don't you think also, too, that there's a lot of people, a lot of kids, young adults, young teens, that will say, I feel different. This is my difference. This is my uniqueness. And I don't know what to do with it. How do you... I show up in the world and still be able to engage with others or have people like you or care about you and not want to, as, you know, the vets and the animal people wanted to take them out. You know what I mean? So how do you show up and how do you become part of the world around you and be able to shine? Because one specific thing you said was about Bear is that he had a shiny coat. So the answer is, how do you shine? How do you reflect light? How do you be present in this world? Isn't that what the kids are really looking for these days? And I mean, hey, even you and I that read the book, oh, yeah. we, we could be looking for that too, right? Oh, yeah. We, um, everybody, it, it seems like every, um, a lot of young people today are trying to be unique. They're trying to um, adapt to the world. They're trying to be seen. It's heartbreaking what's happening now. Um, that we see children, we see adults not embracing who they are, um, mm-hmm. but wanting desperately to be somebody else, to fit into a certain 
um, fit in with a certain group. It's 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 heartbreaking. They're they're destroying themselves and who they are yeah. just to take on another um, identity when we're all all of us have so many. We're all so unique. We're all so different. When I hear talk about diversity, it it makes me ill because we're all so deeply uniquely fearfully and wonderfully made right. that i i just i don't understand what but i do think that the big problem that we have today is that we've turned away from god we've turned away from what the bible says right. and anybody who's experiencing an identity crisis need look no further than the book of ephesians it tells you exactly who you are it's it it's mm-hmm. tells you that you're deeply loved it tells you you're chosen that you're adopted into the family of God, into sonship with him, or daughtership, or child, you know, you're a child of God, and there's so much power within you that externally it doesn't matter what you look like. We are so, we're so, we're, we're so unique, each and every one of us, and um, it breaks my heart to see um, children well, thinking that they're born in the wrong bodies. It's 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 horribly heart heart wrenching, and it just shows me that we've we've departed from the Word of God. But Bear um, Bear is Bear is unique. Um, um, he's he's unique. He's special. Um, right. Like 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 everyone. I think if we if we looked at all of our pets and if we examined them, we'd find something pretty unique in behavior right. wise or just looking at them, you know. So yeah. But also too, how about the idea that Bear goes on to many different other cities? Sometimes we see a lot of people say, Well, it's time for me to go on another adventure, it's time for me to move on or they get lost and then they can't find their way. And then you say, well, what is the way? Where am I intended to be? I think Bear throughout the entire book was trying to find a place where he was meant to be, and he didn't quite find that until the end. But, um, you know, you see all of the places that he, quote, tried out. Don't you think a lot of people are trying out different friends, different places to live, different jobs, different schools, different opportunities, and feel the same way? Um, absolutely. We all think the grass is greener on the other side, and it's not. The grass is greener when it, where, it's get, where it gets watered. You know, I heard somebody yeah. very wise say that. I don't know who, but that that's where the grass is greener. And if we don't water our faith, uh, where we are, then um, running away isn't going to solve any problems. Is it? If you know, but for Bear, um, Bear starts out in in Flushington, and he's not a, he's not attentive, and he gets lost. He ends up in this place called Tidy Meadows, and it's it's unlike anything he's ever experienced. And um, he he spends his kittenhood there in Tidy Meadows with Alex, who who rescues him, right? And, and without giving the story away, um, right. he, he finds his he finds his way home. He finds his way home. Um, he finds his way home. Um, and and also in a in a in a position where no cat wants to be, no cat wants to be on a piece of driftwood down the Missouri River. No right. cat wants that. And we often in life, we find ourselves in places we don't want to be, desperately don't want to be. Right. And um, we've moved around, we've, we've tried different, different um, places to live, different jobs, and we just can't seem to fit in. And now we're in a place we just don't want to be. And um, Bear wasn't trying to fit in, but he did find himself in a place where he didn't want to be. And a lot of people are on that proverbial piece of driftwood down the Missouri River yes. um yep. and they they can't find their they can't find their way out um the um what I was trying to convey with uh that um that um story is that in, no matter how dire our circumstances is God is always there and he provided for bear while he was on that piece of driftwood while he was terrified while he was wet um he he was provided for, 
and that's what God does. And then sometimes we look back at life and we say, how did I, how did I get through that? How did I manage? And then we say, the Lord was with me all the time. It's nothing that we do. All Bear had to do was reach down into the water and that's all we have to do. All we have to do is, is reach for God. Right. And he's there. Also, too, Elena, what I love about your book is that you put some realistic stories in there, like when Ella was having a lot of issues at school, at home, and family. And I, we won't give it away, but I think the idea is that uh, sometimes you need some real real stuff in there that says, yeah, this, this is how the world can be, and this is pretty hard. And I understand that you're having these problems. And I think that's very important, how you gently walked through the issues that Ella was having in her life, but also too stated them clearly and stated them concisely and didn't shy away from that. So it's very important that that was really put in there, don't you think? Oh, absolutely, because children experience real problems, and if they don't have, if they don't have an adult who's listening and helping them, they're just they're going to grow up, they're not going to grow out of their problems. You know, that was one of the, the big the big things with Ella is that um, her, her, her mom thought she was just going to grow out of it. And that's not always the case. And so um, some things need to be addressed. And uh, yeah, it was, it was eye-opening. It was eye-opening writing about Ella. I poured a lot of myself into Ella. Um, and uh, and and her and just and and I just loved watching her just just blossom and just I, I loved it I, I love I love watching Ella grow up. Well, I think it's also too is the idea is that to be realistic. Sometimes stories, you know, I think we're over the the pumpkin, you know, and the toad and all of that other stuff, you know. It's it's time to say this is realistic. This is what's happening in my life. And be able to have a conversation. Because if you're reading this book to your child or your grandchild, um, they're going to have questions. They're going to say, I, I don't know what that is, or did you ever go through that before, they may ask you. Or they may say, I really don't want to read that page. Turn the page, turn the page. And then that can spark a conversation with you as the reader and say, what's going on? What is happening? Have you seen this before? Have, do you have a story to tell? And so it's really a very much a learning tool also, don't you think? Oh, it is. Um, and I've always believed that um, children learn their vocabulary through reading. That's how, they, that's how they learn to read. If they don't know a word, um, they can ask. Looking it up in the dictionary is still the best way to to to, re- to remember it. Um, but that um, it's supposed to spark curiosity. Children are supposed to want to know what these words mean. Um, so I, I, I kept it at a at a certain age level um, with the writing. I think I kept it at at like fifth fourth or fifth grade reading level. Um, so if that that problem wouldn't arise, but there are um, words like methylene tetrahydrofolate, with which you'd be familiar with, but most people wouldn't be. Um, mm-hmm. And um, and um, Ella Ella is a synesthete, so she sees her uh, um, numbers and letters and words in color, and and mm-hmm. and um, so it's so yeah the the real real there's a real there's a realness about it, and there's a realness as to what how she's experiencing the world, and how she learns, and she thinks she's stupid. Ella thinks she's right. stupid. She she's having trouble in school, and and she doesn't see a way out because she just doesn't see a way out. She thinks it's all uh-huh. her, and um and it 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 just it just takes one person. It takes one person to listen and to help. And that was also um, a, a point I wanted to get across. It, it takes one person. It doesn't take a whole bunch of people. And um, but yeah, it's uh, hers. Is, hers. Is, she went on. She went on a journey too. Just like there. There's a lot of yeah. um, there in the Suffington Walks is really about um, a journey, um, a journey through life. 
No. Yeah. Um, I like to say that life might be a highway, but it could also be a piece of driftwood down the Missouri River. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> well, you know what also, too, I, I think, Ella, also, too, is that it brings up a lot of options of fear, too, because a lot of people, when they fear, oh, is it, what, what is that? Is that it's not a cat, what is it? And people had all kinds of fear when they saw a bear. Oh, yeah. But also to the idea of what's this thing going to do to me? So people are always protective about their space and uh, not letting people in. You know, sometimes when we see right. people that are different than us, we're sort of like, oh, well, they might hurt me. They may do something to me or, oh, they don't belong in my inner circle or whatever. So the idea of fear, humans uh, are pretty much uh, very judgmental these days about it, about seeing something that's different, don't you think? And a lot of your characters in the book experienced a lot of fear. Well, when we talk about the the fear um, of the the people in Tidy Meadows and um, uh-huh. this is Cat say, you know, the villain, the villain of the story, she, uh, it's it's not as much fear uh, for her, but it's just um, there's a there's a heart of stone issue. There's a heart of it's a heart problem. Uh-huh. Um, so a lot of most of the people that experience the fear, they 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 have a heart problem. They're not seeing, um, they're not seeing what is really around them. They're not seeing there. They're not seeing you know this this poor little misidentified cat that is now right. ca- has caused a, a a bear frenzy in Fussington. You know that, and they've they've not they've not stopped and rationally looked. They've let that fear in them. Mm-hmm. Does that the fear of danger, yeah, overcome them? Um we're all um we're all um so fearfully and wonderfully made and we're all made in the image of God and um there's a lot of evil going on in the world right now. There's a lot of um deception um happening and people are a lot of people are taking the wrong route. Um what we as Christians do is we love people no matter what because God loved us while we were still sinners. And I wasn't always a believer. I, I didn't always believe. Um, and there were some times, there were times in my life where I had nothing good to say about Christians because I had some experiences, you know, I think because people mm-hmm. are people. Christians are just people. And um, they get judged very quickly um because of Christianity, because, you know, oh, this, this don't judge thing happens. Well, um, no, we're not supposed to judge. Judgment belongs to the Lord. Um, um, correcting people when we see something blatant that, that is harmful, um, there's nothing wrong with that. If we've um, done our due diligence and introspected thoroughly, because that plank in our own eye is real. But that doesn't mean that we we can't um, we can't help uh, redirect somebody else. It's not being judgmental at that point. Um, so I would say introspection uh, introspection is is key is big key. But yeah, um, when it comes to uh, when it comes to the people making trouble in Fussington, and there are some, mm-hmm. that's just all it is. It's it's a heart issue. It's a heart issue and. I, I love the end. Um, without giving the story away, I would give it away in a heartbeat. <laughs> <laughs> I would just give it. I love the I love the characters. I've grown close to the characters, yeah. and so um, it's just a. Uh, it was such a blessing to be given those characters to, to write and to develop them without really knowing that I was developing those characters. But um, one thing that one thing that is is true um, about there is that um, that Jesus is is he's the way and he's the truth and he's the life and there's there's no other way to get to the Father but through him and when when the Miller Pease realized that it's just such a hallelujah moment it was such a it was such a build up to it because um, I, I I didn't know what I was going to do with the characters from one day to the next. 
it's not like uh, the story unfolded. Um, I, ha I didn't have a storyboard going on or anything like that. It was just really every day it just trickled out. It was yeah. Well, you know what I think also, yeah. too, in closing, Elena, is that if we can find that there is good in the world and we are able to uh, dance with faith and hope, I think sometimes we will say, oh, I do see something else. It's sort of like, um, you know, when we're in the world and things really turn wrong and things get really hard and the world seems to be such a struggle, we have to find a light someplace. And I think your book has shown many aspects of light in it. Um, and yes. it's about being able to say, what is the light for me? Where can I find it? And sometimes the light is always found in the darkness. So a lot of people will say, oh, well, I don't know how I got to all of these bad things. Well, maybe you were there to be able to find the light there. Sometimes, you know what I mean? Always sometimes feel people say, well, I want to find the light where it's so bright. Where's that that, you know, I'm, gonna, I'm looking for the light. It's going to be this big, great thing. Well, maybe it's just a spark in the darkness that you would find your light. I mean, that's about uniqueness again, right? Oh, yes. Um, the characters in Bear, um, they find themselves in some dark places, and it's not good. It's not good. It's it, there's a lot of despair. Where it be um, if if Samson's missing Bear, Bear's missing Samson. Ella's missing Samson. Ella's missing her mm -hmm. mother. Her mother. She wants her mother. She's longing. She's she's experiencing despair. Right. Um, when Mr. Miller P realizes the gravity of the situation, he falls on his knees. There's despair, um, and it's it, it, it's a very dark moment for somebody to to realize the depth of what's happening and just when somebody's going through something something hard with it when when we're missing somebody we love when somebody is gone out of our life we experience a despair but in all that the light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it there's right. always that right. light we look for the light when we're when we when we when we're not experiencing um, something that's 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 hurting us, that's tugging on our hearts. We don't necessarily go and seek out the light, and so I think that's right. God put God God doesn't put us in terrible situations. We manage to do that ourselves, um, but in those instances, we seek Him, and 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 He's there, and He's what gets us through. And so God's hand was all over writing there. Um, I I I. Um, I look at this book and I say, I'm an author. This is this is wonderful. I've always <laughs> wanted to I have always wanted to be Doctor Jeanette, when I was um when I was fifteen we had career day in boarding school and I wanted to um I wanted to be a journalist. I wanted to be a writer. And um the nun teaching me said, Elena, put your hand down. Just put it down. Ugh. You know? Mm -hmm. And I didn't think so I didn't think I was able to do anything and that was just a lie from the pit of hell <laughs> because the That's devil right. comes to steal kill and destroy he will yep. destroy our dreams and just like bear's dream came true well so did mine i never thought That's right. i never thought for a minute i'd be talking to dr jeanette <laughs> That's <laughs> right. Bear. i never I, thought for a minute and it's it's a glorious opportunity and i thank you so much for having me on you know, I think it's so awesome to have you on, Elena, because if we look at it, here you are doing a summer read book, you know what I mean, that's going to touch young adults all the way through to elders, and to be able to say, um, you know, how is your life doing? And instead of listening to the story, say, oh, let's, let's see what this cat did today. You know, let's go see where she right. went. You know, and it's sort of like it shifts the energy it shifts our perspective and it lets us let go of all of that stuff we're holding on to sometimes and i absolutely love the book because i think it is just something so unexpected and it will take you to places that will touch your heart so i think it's so yes. well written it is absolutely wonderful story elena and i'm so glad you were on Thank the show you. today <laughs> 
thank you. I am so glad. I am so glad to be on too. And I've also written um, six uh, 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 six uh, children's stories, three that run alongside parallel to Bear, and three prequels too. So I look forward to publishing those. Oh, very awesome. Can you share with the listeners how to find out more information about this book? Uh, yes, it's available on Amazon. It's called Bear and the Fussington Locks. And um, my webpage is uh, fussinglocks.com. That's fussing locks um, with an S like Frank. And uh, my Twitter is at fussinglocks. Very good. Well, it was such a pleasure to have you with us here today. We thank you so much for joining us. And we look forward to having you back on when you finish up with those other books. Yes? Oh, wonderful. Absolutely, Dr. Nizunet. Thank you so much. You're so welcome. If you'd like to find out more information about Elena Boyette, again, the book is Bear at the Fussington Locks, please do click on the link on the bottom of today's show page to go directly to her website for more information. And definitely, this is a 2023 summer read for all ages. It's just sit down and delight in the pages. You may find inspiration, hope, Something may get triggered, something you may say, oh, I want to share this story with my grandchildren. Perhaps you may say, oh, I can find myself on this page. And isn't it wonderful to be able to have a delightful story, to be able to just get you through the summertime. So we thank you so much for joining us today. This is Dr. Jeanette Gallagher, and until tomorrow, have a great day. Today we discuss many life-changing concepts. Who do you turn to and how do you know what is best when faced with a health crisis? Dr. Jeanette is a patient advocate. She listens to the patient, the doctors, and the family, clarifies the health issues and concerns, then helps the patient make the best choices going forward. If you would like help implementing change into your life and health, we can talk and see where you are stuck and how to improve the quality of your life. Check the link on the bottom of today's show page or visit drjeanettegallagher.com to schedule a phone appointment today.